for me, I've, I've, always, I've always wanted to fight the best because uh, at the end of the journey, when I look back and I look at my record, at least I can say I didn't duck or dodge anyone. I fought anyone and everyone. Lovinaka, welcome to the Time Sports Show. Uh, as usual, a lot happening in uh, sports this year and uh, this week uh, especially. The Fiji Sevens team training in uh, Nandi and Lotoka, all eyes on them. The Flying Fijians uh, uh, playing the Barbarians for the Kilik Cup. And of course, uh, there's a boxing promotion here in Suva. A lot of people are following boxing, professional boxing in Fiji right now. And the Blue Water Boxing Promotions takes place uh, at uh, the Motorphone Arena uh, this Saturday and the main bout will be Sebastian Singh uh, versus Savanada Naliva. All boxing fan in Fiji, every boxing fan in Fiji wanted to see that fight for a long time. It has been uh, uh, it has been called for by many fans and boxers, of course. Uh, Savanada Naliva undefeated in Fiji for a very long time. Uh, recently, he has uh, lost a few fights uh, locally, of course. And Sebastian Singh, well, everyone remembers that fight that uh, he fought against uh, Junior Farzan Ali, which uh, was uh, towards the end of Farzan's career, but uh, it began the career for Sebastian Singh. A lot of them. I remember that night at uh, Nani's Prince Charles Park, a jam-packed uh, uh, Prince Charles Park, where Sebastian knocked out Farzan Ali in the first round. Uh, to here, today here with us, we have uh, the man himself, Sebastian Singh, now based out of Australia, but he's here in Fiji now. Uh, his dad wasn't uh, too well, so he was, he's been here for a month now, and of course prepa preparing for the fight uh, this week against uh, Naliva. Sebastian, thank you for your time, uh, thank you for speaking to us, and uh, a fight against Naliva, a fight uh, long uh, awaited by many fans, and of course uh, you have been calling for this fight for a long time now as well. Uh, you must be excited uh, to go this Saturday. Yes, 100%. Uh, <coughs> it's been a it's been a long time coming. It's a fight that I've been asking for, I think, uh, for about two years. For me, I've, I've, always, I've always wanted to fight the best because uh, at the end of the journey when I look back and I look at my record, at least I can say I didn't duck or dodge anyone, I fought anyone and everyone. And for Naliva, like, it's, it's a big fight for me because Naliva, Naliva is a person, such a beautiful human being, I've sat with him, we've had uh, beautiful chats, we've talked about family and you know the upbringings we had. But come this Saturday, everything we put aside, no love lost, no love found, and I think we're going to go to war. Hmm. Uh, Sebastian, uh, you've been deprived of a win uh, lately in, in your last four or five fights. I guess uh, you, you're yet to record uh, a win. And going up against a fighter like uh, Naliva, uh, how difficult is it to get that mentality going you know, for a big fight like this? Uh, to be honest, Rohit, I've, I'm, I feel good. Like My training camp has been beautiful. I've, I've prepared really well. Um, the only thing I'm calling out is for the referee and judges to be fair on the night and uh, you know like everything to be done uh, in a certain way where everything is proper. My last fight with uh, Koyada, I wasn't up to, I wasn't up to standard, I, I couldn't execute my game plan because of certain reasons and uh, yeah I just, I just hope for a fair call on fight night to be honest. Other than that uh, we've really really trained hard. I've, I've lost about 13 kilos in four weeks. I'm already on weight, I feel good, I feel strong, so I'm just looking forward to come this Saturday. Mm. Looking at your camp, uh, you mentioned that your dad uh, wasn't too well lately. Uh, he's been your mentor, he's been your trainer for, for a very long time. Uh, he's guided you a lot in boxing. Uh, how much of him, you know, his health right now uh, will affect or may inspire you in this fight? To be honest, uh, it's, it's all been this, this hunger and this rage has just been inspiration for me. Because uh, growing up from a very young age, my dad's always been there in my corner and um, he's, he's not, uh, he wasn't feeling too well. We've given him time to recover. But uh, Kwajo's been training me, training me for this fight. Same product, same product of the same gym. Uh, we've been, uh, I've been blessed to be training at BoxFit. Uh, Suva, I've been doing my preparations, been going there well. And uh, Team Kwajo, actually the whole team, uh, all his amateur boys, everybody has really helped me out in this camp. And like I said, like we're ready as a team to you know uh, perform on Saturday night. 
Mm. With this fight being held in Suva, uh, a lot of Western fans will, of course, travel down. Mm. Naliva's got a good backing as well in the Western division. But you think this fight being held in Suva, that, that might be a, a bit of an added advantage? Oh, man, I, I, for me, when this fight was first offered to me, I wasn't too keen because obviously I was going through some situations of my own but when when i found out it was in suva it was for the people of suva why not because for me like i grew up here and um, everything everything ar about me is like suva you know I, I i love i love this city so for me to be fighting here at home you know i pray that the fans the suva fans come out in numbers especially all my brothers out and about you know like um, yeah, just anyone and everyone, you know, everyone who knows me, I, I pray that they come out in numbers to not just support me, but the whole event. There's, there's, there's a lot of good fights on the event, and I think uh, a lot of fans will get their money worth. Hmm. Now you mentioned uh, you've been in uh, quite some situations in life. Uh, uh, well, you're a celebrity and people, uh, many know about what, what has happened with you and what you've been through. In terms of boxing, uh, there was a time when you no, you reached your peak and, mm. and then you slowly went down and then you tried to pull yourself up again. How important of a fight will this fight be in your career uh, when it comes to boxing and uh, you know, for you to get up the ranks again? Well, to be honest, uh, this is it. It's either I proved I'm, I'm not out here, this fight, I'm not out here trying to prove to the world that I've still got it. I'm, I'm, I'm actually at a point where I'm trying to prove to myself that I still got it. Um, if I know that I cannot perform to that level anymore, uh, I'm, I'm better off uh, taking a step back from boxing and focusing on something else that could help me actually look after my family. And to me, that's more important. So to me, this fight, uh, I'm, I'm, I've based it more on proving to myself because uh, in the gym, we've worked hard every single day. It's been a short training camp, but we've worked hard every single day. I've pushed hard every single day. Uh, we, have had an, we haven't had any days off. We haven't had any uh, slow training sessions. Everything's been explosive since day one. And uh, I know Naliva's, Naliva is coming out. Like anyone who fights me knows that you know I'm going to come to fight. And I know Naliva is putting in the hard work as well in the West. And I think, uh, you know, come fight night, it will be like, I think the main event is going to be explosive. It's going to be a good fight. Mm. You spoke highly of your opponent, Savinada Naliva. A gutty boxer, uh, a stubborn boxer, uh, hardly gives up in the ring. Uh, same as you, you, you there, there have been times uh, when, when it looked like you'll give up, but then you got up and, and went, out, went up to win the match. Uh, we know that uh, he will come out firing as well. You've been preparing well, he's been preparing well as well. What would your plan be like? I, I know you wouldn't want to reveal everything, but what can fans expect from you uh, when To when be the honest, starts? they, I think, like, I, like, I, like I'm going to say it again, not just for me, but from both sides, I think it's come to a point where none of us can, can afford to lose. And from both sides, I know it's going to be an explosive fight, but I think whoever has more heart, and who's got more will will be surviving you know th this fight for naliva like i said i've sat with him i've chat with him i got a r lot of respect for the guy he's we we're, we're the same we're the same people we're just two blue collar workers we, we like people look at us as celebrities or athletes or whatever they see us as but we're just two blue collar workers just trying to you know earn a living for our family and and, and put food on the table for our family and and that's what it is for us and uh like i said man he's like i've sat with him after he's, he's a beautiful guy he's a nice guy we had good conversations but we, we even spoke about fighting each other because we knew that the division we're in, there's only four, four fighters in the division. That's me, Joseph, Naliva, and Koyada. This fight had to happen. And after this fight, if Koyada still ducks one of us, uh, I think Koyada should just um, vacate all his titles and, and do other things that would actually help him in his career. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's a bad taste in our mouth understanding that I fought somebody who had uh, semen plasters on, the public can go and say whatever they would love to say, that I'm, I'm being a suk or I'm being a whinge, I'm whinging about the situation. But the thing is, I love this sport so much. I've done it from such a young age, and I've never ever thought in my head to do so anything as such because I love, I love the clean side of, of boxing. At the end of the day, they could keep saying they didn't do it, or, or the public could say he didn't do it. But I know what I got hit with, 
and on the night the team that was behind Koyada know what they wrapped his hands with and <clears throat> he was uh, this is a bit out of topic but when he was asked to fight me again he complained about me not qualifying for the IBO title I qualified for the IBO title we were supposed to go he said nah and then he promised, pro promised the promoter that it's gonna happen then he told me my world rating wasn't good enough because he's ranked in the top 100 I'm ranked top 200 he said oh, my rating wasn't good enough so I said alright fine sweet valid reason but now it has come out on, on media and on box track he's going to fight a guy who's ranked 1200 in the world who's 47 years old like well, what is this guy talking about it's you can clearly see that he's ducking and dodging the best fighters in Fiji and and, and I think Fiji boxing has come to a point where the best should fight the best uh, like now, for example, I give respect to Winston Hill. He's fought everybody and anybody that's put in front of me, and 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 I think that's that's the way like it's supposed to be. So it it keeps the public interest in the sport of boxing. Hmm. You've spoken about family. Your family has played an important part in your boxing career. Uh, I'd I'd like to take this a bit personal. You're you're quite active on social media, and. Uh, and I've always seen you defending your, yourself and your family when it when it comes to allegations on social media. Your brother's a boxer as well. Your younger brother is coming up. Uh, your dad has has begged you a lot, and your mom is also a big support, uh, a big fan of uh, of your brothers. You know, all these things that happen on social media. You know the negative comments, the swears. You know the vulgar languages being used. How much does it affect the family life of a boxer? To be honest, uh, Rohit, because I've been around the sport so long and I've been around negativity all my life growing up to the point I'm at, I think it's come to a point where it doesn't affect me at all. Uh, growing up in Fiji, obviously everything here is beautiful and wonderful. And growing up, we've come to understand that <clears throat> talking straight to people and, and, and following rules and regulations and, and, and basically standing your ground it's a tambu, like it's not allowed. Like if you see something wrong, and if this person's older than you, or he say he's 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 got more money than you, whatever it is, you're not allowed to question what they are doing. I think the situation here is, I've, I'm I'm a type of person. I see something wrong. I'm I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna try to make a difference. And I think a lot of hatred from the public comes from that part. But at the same time, they are the they they are fans who's actually sat and had a cup of coffee with me, or who's actually sat down with me, or, or probably just trained with me or hung out with me, and and they know the type of person I am. You know, like <clears throat> so. Like for me, I'm not gonna like I've, like a lot of times I have I have uh, a lot of times like to myself like I've always been through the situation where I'm like should I change myself? Should I just go with the flow? Should I just flow with the water just like everybody else? And then that, if I do that, what is the difference between me and the second person who's beside me? I have I have to make a difference. Everybody's got to make a difference. Like there's a lot of talk out there. Like a, like a lot of people has a lot of lot of different stories to say about me. But what I've been through life, and what my family's been through with me, at the end of the day. My family is the only one who stood with me through thick and thin, and uh, no matter what happens in life, I always defend them, and 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 I think it's like that for everybody. So, yeah, like we, as as you know, we're a boxing family, and you know we we love we we don't like this. We love this. We this is this is this is life to us. Mm. Fighting is life to us. This is what we enjoy doing, and and like. For us, like when we are training, when we're sweating, when we're going through all those hard yards, we enjoy it. I, I do road runs and when I start feeling pain, I enjoy the pain. I, I manifest on the pain because I know that after the pain comes success. Good things don't come easy. Everybody knows good things don't come easy. So I'm just looking forward to Saturday. You know, adrenaline's a bit high. Uh, probably we'll do something stupid at the weigh-in. I don't know. Like I said, there's a lot of adrenaline around this this fight camp. And yeah, I just look forward to Saturday. I just look, I'm looking forward to the round one bell ringing and then we go to war and after the fight you know we shake hands we've both gone there entertained the crowd but like I said man I've, I've really prepared really hard like although it was a short camp I, had, I didn't prepare like this for the Koyada fight because uh, <clears throat> my team um, Joseph's been head coach he understands what Naliva brings we understand 
the amount of strength, pressure, and, and, and we got to go through in that ring. And at the same time, uh, I'm, I'm glad that the fight in Suva, but the crowds can, can change with a flick of a finger. If they don't like you, they don't like you. What are you going to do? If they don't like me, am I supposed to run away from the ring back into my change? You know, I gotta stand there and fight like a warrior. And 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 I think I've always been a warrior. I've always fought in Nandy, always fought against the crowd. I've always stood tall. I've you know I've always represented myself good. So I look forward to Saturday. Hmm. Apart from the main bout, the, there are a few other good fights uh, on the night. In fact, all all fights look good on the card. Your your thoughts on on, on the lineup for Saturday? Oh man. It's exciting. I wish I wasn't fighting main bout. I was fighting somewhere in between. I could watch the rest of the fight. I think that uh, Ali and Ronald Naidu will be explosive. It'd be a good fight. I think uh, Ali is just a young and hungry. He's like a stallion from the wild. You know, he's just ready to to, to stand in front of anybody. For James and Daulo Loma, that's that's another explosive fight, man. Don't blink. <laughs> you see, <laughs> if you blink, you're gonna miss the knockout. <laughs> And then there's Rokuro and Chese. I think Rokuro and Chese is going to be a very competitive fight because Rokuro's last few fights, he looked so impressive. Mm. He looked really impressive in his last few fights. And, and I think Chese is at a point two of redemption. And then like uh, there's this fighter coming up. A lot of people are paying attention to uh, Joseph Ravundi. He's uh, one to look out for in the near future. He's, uh, che he's uh, Chese's younger brother. A very, very good fighter, very strong fighter. So looking forward to his fight, and I think Binu, Binu Singh's fight should be should be exceptionally well as well. But I think the I think there should be a bit more, you know, like uh, for the Fijian title, anyone and everyone is fighting for the Fijian title. I think it's come to a point where the Fijian title doesn't have any value. Anyone like you, you could have six, seven losses straight, and still perform good, and you can go fight for a Fijian title. Where is the value of the title? You know, at least, you know, the commission need to look into like uh, you need to win your last two fights in order to fight for the Fijian title. At least give the title some value, because right now it's just like a tin and leather. That's that's the value of it. No disrespect to anyone or any of the fighters who's got a Fijian title, but uh, it'd be nice for. You know, people who's got good records to fight, record for title, even like abroad to even fight for a state title, you, you need to uh, rack up a particular yeah. amount of wins in order to fight for a state title. Mm. So, yeah, well, all, all the fights should be good. I'm looking forward to, but like I said, I, I can't watch none of these fights over in the changing room. But yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hope, hopefully, let's see how, how it goes, because I'm at a point where I'm slowly thinking about retirement and I need to focus on other things because logically looking at it, oh, it was a beautiful journey. Boxing's been nothing but beautiful. I love all the aspects I've been through, through the sport of boxing, but I think it's come to a point where I'm starting to think about the future. We're thinking about investments, thinking about businesses, thinking about something bigger. I don't want to... I don't want to let the sport retire from me. I want to retire from the sport on a good note. So like I said, this fight is me proving to myself that I'm still there, that I can still make it. Like, uh, I'm not trying to impress anybody. Obviously, the fight's gonna be, it's gonna be brutal, I know that. But like I said, this is more important to me. Like for all my fights, I've always tried to look good, to entertain the crowd, to make sure the crowd is happy, they go home. But this fight, I think it's come to a point where it's a bit personal for me, where I need to prove to myself that it's still worth investing time and effort into this. Or else, you know, hang up your glove in, on a good note, walk away with a smile on your face, walk away, I've got two beautiful girls, look after my daughters, and you know, they, they say sail away to the sunset. <laughs> mm. Regardless of the result on Saturday, uh, what you've mentioned about Koyava, how hungry would you be you know, before you mentioned about hanging up your gloves for one last fight with him be before that happens? You know, it's, it's come to a point where that, that boat and that anchor is starting to sail because um, I've done everything in my power to get the rematch and I think a promoter of uh, South Pacific Boxing has offered him big money for the rematch, like he's been offered good money. But I think, I'm, I'm looking at, at, at it another way, Rohit. He's looking at what's good for his career. You know, he's probably 
in the dream where he wants to retire undefeated, where he wants to retire on a good note, same as me. And uh, like I said, inside his heart, deep inside his soul, you know, where there's no light, he knows. He knows inside his heart he had those cement wraps on because I know what I got hit with. Straight after the fight, after, straight after the fight when I fought him, as soon as I got out of the ring and I was walking to my changing room, I turned to Maluk and I told Maluk, Maluk, he, his reps were loaded. And then I told my other friend his reps were loaded and then these guys were like, Seb, it's okay, you lost, you, know, you don't have to be upset about it. This is straight after the fight. This is before it even came out to public. I knew what I got hit with. I fought, I fought Bilal Akwe. He's a known killer. He's Canelo Alvarez's sparring partner. He's a known knockout artist. He didn't even hit as half as hard as Koyada did. And I fought, I fought Clay Waterman, man, known killer, Olympic gold medalist, a youth Olympic gold medalist. He never hit as hard as Koyada did. And another way, another scenario of looking at it, look at the fight between Joseph Kwajo and Senindoko. Senindoko. He rattled Joseph, but Joseph got the win. Beautiful. Same thing with Alvere, uh, with uh, with uh, Apisa Nadinga. He rattled Joseph. Joseph. Koyada didn't give any problem to Joseph. Joseph was right in front of him throughout the whole fight. So they, they, these are ways to actually understand what happened on the night. Because Rohit, I mean anyone, any anyone, if you've beaten somebody once and you and you think you've beaten them convincingly. Why would you risk an IBO title? Why would you risk it getting vacant and not fighting him to rematch the title? We get to keep the IBO title. Besides Winston, uh, I think I think oh yeah, the title is valid till the seventh or eighth of next month. If he doesn't defend it, 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 it they strip him off. He had the opportunity to defend it with me, but he chose not to. So if if you think about it, there's there's a lot of factors. Like, oh, I think that. This guy should shut me up. Like he should, if, if, because, I mean, as we know, like my dad caught him with the reps. Everybody went all around the place and made it look like my dad was lying. All right, cool, sweet, bro. But you still got caught with the reps. Why don't you come and shut me up? Let's get in the ring, shut me up, knock me out, and, and carry your pride with you. If you can't do that, that doesn't like if, if I've beaten somebody and, and, and say their trainer or somebody made, makes allegations against me, it's going to bring rage in me. I will want to go back and knock him out and, and, and shut him up. Done. Yeah. But this guy, he, like, he, he can't even, and it's come to a point he can't even lie about it no more, uh, no more because screenshot message here, screenshot message there, this, that, like, you know, this, like, there's so much around this fight. And, and like I said, man, and then like, he was caught. He was caught with illegal reps, all right? All right, with Joseph, he didn't use that reps. His title was stripped. They gave his title back. Where, where, is, where, where is the worth of our title? Like, do, do people understand if he hits somebody at the back of the head and you have internal bleeding and you get paralyzed? Who looks after your family? Who looks after your kids? Who looks after your mom and dad? You become a paralyzed human being. Do people understand the severity of what he did? It seems like everybody just brushes it, it brushes it off like it doesn't matter. But you, people won't understand until it happens to them. Like for everybody, it's like, oh, you're being a sook, you're being a soul loser. All right, cool, sweet. Just pray to God it doesn't happen to your child. You know, because like I said, man, I fought some real good hard hitters, even to the extent of, you know, sparring Sunny Bill and all of this stuff. But Koyada, like what he did was disgusting. It's, it's literally disgusting. It brings a bad name to the sport. And like I said, he's beaten me once. And if he thinks in his heart that he didn't cheat, brother, contract's ready, promoter's ready, sign the contract, let's get it on. You know what I mean? I've even gone to the point where I've told the promoter, I'll fight him. Winner takes everything. That's 20 grand. That's 20 stacks ready to be taken whoever wins the fight. But still making excuses. Oh, I want to fight somebody with better record, this, that. Fighting somebody with better record is fighting a guy with one win, two losses, ranked 1,200 in the world, 47, 45, 47 years of age. Who are you fighting that is better? It doesn't make sense. There's better fighters here who are ready to go. Mm. So. Mm. These things have uh, really made us hate the sport. Like it's it's starting to, it's starting to it, not the sport, just dislike the way things are ran here. Yeah. But you know, thank God for everything. Just 
we just keep going, keep fighting. Like I said, for me right now, I'm not focused on him. I'm focused on Naliva. Mm -hmm. You know, the dangerous guy, beautiful guy. Should be a good fight. I look forward to fighting him, to be honest. Mm. Finally, <laughs> uh, your predictions for the fight. What can what can fans expect? Uh, you going for an early knockout or, or what, are, what are you looking at? Oh man, I, I don't know what to predict, to be honest, because the... Like I said, man, this is a chess match. You can call it a coin toss. But obviously, I want to win. He wants to win. I, one thing I can predict, right? One thing I can I can confirm, the fans are gonna get their money worth. Because he's gonna hit me with two shots. I'm gonna try to hit him with three. He's gonna try to come back with something bigger. And I think, uh, I mean, if you look at both of our record, we fought some of the best fighters in the Oceania, Asia Pacific region, even. And uh, we've always put up a fight. You know, I think we're just uh, too strong will, hard-headed, uh, brainless coconuts ready to smash each other. So I think it's going to be a good fight. I'm looking forward to the fight. Mm. All right, thank you so much. And uh, we wish you the very best for the fight on Saturday. And hopefully we get to chat after, after uh, the fight on Saturday, uh, come next week or the week later. Thank you very much. There you go, Saturday. Uh, Lothala Bay is the place to be. Some big fights coming up. And we wish uh, Savannah and Aliva Jr. all the very best as well. We know you're a very good fighter and you're going up against another very good fighter. So fans are in for a treat on Saturday. Uh, till we meet again, remember uh, you can grab uh, the uh, Fiji Times Daily for your latest on local and international sports and of course follow our social media handles for the latest in everything that happens in sport. Till we meet again, Isamode.